what's up guys welcome to your morning cup it's your boy dubby um it's november 5th 2020 um thursday um so where are we still um in the undecided election which looks like it's almost about to be decided and um we're right where we were um talking about we're gonna be pretty much um and I say that, like, I mean, post-election, you know, we're two days removed or, you know, it's the second morning after. And um, what can I say? You guys have seen your news reels, so I'm not going to go in detail about everything. But, you know, um, the president, President Trump, is he's unhappy. He's on Twitter going crazy. Um, um, the votes, we knew the election wasn't going to be decided that night. And it's Thursday and it's still not officially been declared. And um, even though it's starting to lean towards um, Joe Biden to being the 46th president of the United States. And uh, I mean, we all know that the uh, voting system is flawed. But, you know, every election, whether you flip red to blue, the uh, constituents are going to be unhappy and they're going to have their gripes. But this election is, is in particular, is more, um, it's more... Um, it's more more important because of the situation where we of course we have the the novel coronavirus is still doing its thing. You have this controversial president and a bunch of other things that go with it that we've gone over and over and we all gone over in our own circles, or whether it's on a media board or a social media board, you know, you see me I talk about it with my friends and you guys talk about it with yours. We all have our opinions. Bam, bam, boom. But here we are, and we have unrest. We have um, protests. We have um, um, encounters with police and riot gear with protesters. You know, which has become the 2020 standard. And, um, you know, so I've always been me. Like I say, I've always been a big history, um, a big history guy in school, high school, uh, middle school, junior high, whatever, um, I liked my history today. I, today, even today, I still love it. I still try to um, absorb as much stuff as I can that I don't know, and I know I will never be able to know as everything because there's so much out there, and we're still learning every day. But I like to get as much as I can because you know history is so crucial in our existence. Because if we pay attention to it, it will make our lives better. Because we can learn from the mistakes. We can learn from trial and error. And even an example with um, the, the virus, we can learn from it because we just went through a little, a whole thing of it. Now we're just coming through again and we should be able to handle it better with our experience. Knowledge is great, but knowledge is even more powerful when you combine it with experience. That's when it's really, really, that's when you have wisdom now. So anyway, let's go to a video, you know, and um, we're gonna get where we're going today on the cup. Presidential elections are incredibly rare, but with so many questions about mail-in ballots and voter security, Contested elections. many Americans are concerned their votes will not count. Contesting a national election is easier said than done. That's what's going to happen. Election isn't really a national Donald election. Trump will contest this election. He won separate elections, one in each state and Washington. So let's just do the history rundown. The candidate would have to contest the results in one or more states where he or she thinks there was a problem. A losing candidate would have to wait until the state certifies a winner, then file a lawsuit called a contest of election suit. That would ask the court to overturn the result. Most of the challenges would be handled by a state court, but if it seems like there are constant Constitutional issues to the challenge, the case could eventually go to the Supreme Court. Only twice has the Supreme Court had to get involved in deciding a contested presidential election. In the 1800s, Supreme Court justices had to sit on a congressional commission to decide the election between Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel Tilden. Hayes won and went on to become a one-term president. One term the recent and memorable one was the 2000 president 2000, of course. George W. Bush and Al Gore. Hanging chads and dimple chads were new phrases in Americans' vocabulary. That's because in 2000, many states still used a punch card ballot. That little piece of paper you punched out was called a chad. The 2000 election all came down to those chads. Some were not punched out the entire way and were left hanging off the ballot. Others were marked by a pencil and partially punched in, but still firmly on the paper. 
Bush's side fought to dismiss all those ballots where the Chads weren't entirely punched out. Gore's side wanted a manual recount of the ballots. The case made it to the Florida Supreme Court, which called for a hand count of those ballots, but the decision was appealed. By mid-December, the U.S. Supreme Court, noting that a new president had to be inaugurated the following month, took on the case. It reversed the Florida Supreme Court decision requiring a hand count of some ballots. That meant George W. Bush, Mad who had about 500 more votes than Gore without the manual recount, won the state. That pushed him over the electoral vote edge, and he became the 43rd president of the United States. 500. As the American voting system changes and evolves, court interactions about 500 votes. Common. It's a concern our nation's founders may have never accounted for. You USA Today good looks. So that's where we are. We're gonna have a contested election. You know, Bush. I mean, Bush. Shit. Uh, Trump already said he's going. You know, he already set up the card. The the, the 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 cards. The dominoes already been set up. You know, um, with the Supreme Court. You know, with uh, Coney Barrett, Barry Coney, whatever her name is. Um, get her. Um. Put on the on the panel on the nine member panel of the highest court of the land, and uh, you know it's already been over and set up. Everything's been lined up, so here we are again. And um, we, we got, I got my popcorn, bro. Cause like, cause really, I'm I don't trip about this shit. You know, some people do. You know, some I have a lot of loved ones who bug out about this shit. You know, but you know I'm not gonna. You know, Bush, Obama, Clinton, whatever. You know, you know some. I have my opinions about, but you know, all of them are have you can tear apart if you want, and some of them you can uh, have more good things to say about than the others. Like me, you know, it's about uh, a lot of the things that my concerns are. I'm a big money dude, um, and my uh, uh well being. So like, I'm a, I understand with people um voting for their um. For their um own personal interest, you know, for their for themselves, and like so when they have these rappers, they trot these rappers out. Fifty, you want to check Donald Trump? Fifty got money, you know. He want to parade him around and Lil Wayne. He's a, he's he's a, he's a, he's a whatever. I don't know what to call him. He's an alien for real. He's a weird dude, but you know, with him too though. I like what Pusha said about him though. He was like, you worried about um Trump. Or um, Biden taxing you, you should be. He was never worried about pushing tea when he. I mean, he was never worried about baby when he was taking your bread, for thirty years. Push hates him. So, what we got here, man? What we got? Shut off on me. Yeah, you did. So yeah, man. So now that situation is gonna gain steam. It's gonna gain steam in the next in the next few. Why are you moving like that? Hey. Presidential elections okay. are incredible. Okay. Oh yeah, presidential I'm elections. Next. So yeah, that situation gonna gain steam, and um, and I mean, yeah, let me get to that, right? Because it's it's pretty much what I'm talking about. Check out this shit. Nevada. 
<laughs> oh man. Maybe I hope I hope y'all got a kick out of that like I did. So you see me beating these niggas tight. These my man pissed. Yo, this is gonna be wild, yo, because you know that side of the fence. When I was talking, remember I had the the um the video with Trump when he was talking about the other side and he was talking about the opposition. Well, you know, you know, like I said, it's the divided, you know, the divided states. There's lines drawn, and that side of the fence, they're gonna take a L. They're gonna be, they're gonna lose. They're losing. They're gonna lose. They're gonna be announced as a loser. That's what he's looking. You know, it's gonna take a lot. It's gonna take some. I don't really know, but it's gonna. Be, it's looking bad for them, and they're not happy, and they're gonna be doing their thing. And I'm, you know, we're talking about aggressive shit. You know, it's gonna be with aggression. You know, so look for that. Like I said, unrest and violence. Is coming up, you know. On the other hand, things Lindsey Graham, his dusty ass, he escaped to South Carolina. He probably, the, yo, he remember he was crying. Remember Lindsey was crying for donations, and he was talking about the brother who was coming to get his spot. But now nah, South Carolina held up, held his redneck ass down. You know, South Carolina, true to form, staying at form, and um, taking care of Lindsey. So. There's some more unrest. This is New York City last night. Election night. The violence and unrest the mayor and police commissioner have been trying last to night. avoid lit up near Washington Square Park. You can see bicycle cops peddling demonstrators, glass dragging this protester like through the glasses. crowd. Both sides tussling in the street. Protesters threw garbage, eggs, and even lit fires across the West Village. Officers hurried to extinguish them. Multiple groups with varying messages had protests planned for Wednesday night. Chopper 2 shows numerous arrests near Union Square. The NYPD says those arrested, quote, attempted to hijack a peaceful protest. For most of the afternoon and evening, the marching was peaceful. Demonstrators with Protect the Results made their way down Fifth Avenue, with NYPD escorting them. Their message directed towards the president. I am here tonight. Because we want qualified to know that we are not going to stop until all votes are counted. There are facts and there is libel. And his claims have been false. Yo, man. So, this is just the beginning. I know there's more news um, stories you guys are going to see, man. Um, Yo, hit me on Instagram, though. Um, w Dubois, W underbar Dubois. So, um, hit me in, in the direct messages, the DMs, all that shit. If there's stories and stuff. You know, try to get to them quick while they still relevant. You know, we talk about them. This is wild, though. So, you know? Your boy, man. So, um, I got one more thing for us today. You know, we talked a little elections. And I want to go back to something I mentioned earlier. And that is the coronavirus in the second has announced A second lockdown in England. The decision second comes from soaring COVID-19 cases there. CBC's Cindy Palm has the details from London. The Prime Minister started off his press conference by apologizing for disturbing people Saturday night, and he said he wouldn't do it unless it were something important. Now, previously, the government had said it did not want to put a second national lockdown in place. But now the government feels it has no choice. So there will be a national lockdown for England beginning on Thursday, lasting for about a month until December the 2nd. Today. Um, this means that bars and restaurants will close, that people won't be allowed to make trips outside unless it's for essential reasons, such as going out for groceries, for school, for work, although they are encouraging people to work from home. The Prime Minister brought along two of his scientific advisors who said that there are now 50,000 cases of COVID daily in the UK. That's up from the 20,000 or so cases that we had been reporting on in the last couple of weeks. 50,000 daily in, in the United Kingdom, in England, Scotland, and all that. So it is now, um, in terms of the number of cases, as bad as it is in neighboring countries, um, in countries such as France and, and Spain and other countries in Europe. However, just in terms of the number of deaths, the UK has the most recorded number of deaths at over 46,000. And take a listen to the, what, the, what the Prime Minister said, that his fear that hospitals will soon be overwhelmed. And that's the and key, doctors man. doctors will have to make difficult choices. Uh, if they That's the key, is the, is the, is, um, the capacity, well, how much the hospital can hold as far as patients and um, the amount of patients being compromised because the virus is going to take up so much of the staff and so much of the manpower. 
and um, it's gonna it's gonna overflow the system, the whole hospital system. That's the main thing. People are like, oh, don't kill you, whatever. But it's it's a whole chain reaction that the virus causes. You know, you got the whole ICU floor with with corona patients with ventilators. Now, what the how about the um people with heart conditions who have get heart surgery or whatever have you or whatever they need the ICU for who had a heart attack or whatever a stroke, and now you know you need ventilators. So you know you see that. So it 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 relates to a lot. It relates to everything, you know. We talked about it's 2020, 2020, Corona owns it. It owns us. So people not happy about that. People go, oh, they're gonna lock in England, they're gonna get pissed. I wanna go to the bar, I wanna go to the bloody bar. They're gonna wanna go. People not, there's a lot of people who just not with it, you know, for whatever reason. They don't believe in it or they don't give a shit, no matter. But you know, and, that, and that's where we're at, and that's where we've been at. And that's where we're going to continue to be. There is no national lockdown in place to try to stem this tide. Listen, and nurses will be forced to choose between saving COVID patients and non-COVID patients. And the sheer weight of COVID demand would mean depriving... Yo, yeah, he had that job. Hundreds of thousands, if not he had millions. It. They had him on a ventilator. Boris know what up. Boris know. Prime, Prime Minister Boris, no, you know how I feel. Yo, but we're talking. Lockdown. So there were I'm gonna tell you guys some shit. Depending on the rate, depending on the rate of infection, but what uh, his scientists have found is that this is not stemming the tide enough. This is not flattening that curve enough. Mr. Johnson said the hope is that with these new restrictions, it's families early, will be able to gather for Christmas. And just a quick note as well that the, this national lockdown pertains to England, but not the whole of the UK, because Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales, they set uh, their own rules. Cindy Palm reporting in London. Okay. COVID curfews in Italy. How it is in China and India, you know what I'm saying? But, um... Listen, man. Listen. First of all, you know, I don't. There's. I know. There's, I understand that there's a lot of people who have not been affected by Corona directly. You know. You know. Thank God I haven't had it. Not yet. <laughs> you know, for real though, because in New York City, like, like you know, it's, it's gone around. But and the thing about it is, it does different things to different people. And that's what I've learned. That's what a lot of us have learned, you know. And I've, I have, I know, I have an acquaintance who has a limp because of the coronavirus. They have a freaking limp, like they got this, the short bus limp, like the, you know, they do all of that. I'm like, yo, he was chilling before, you know. You put, you put, you put heart monitors in people's chest. You put people on dialysis. It take people memories. It permanently can take your taste. Sometimes it gives it back. Yo, Corona, do what the hell she wants. And people be like, you know, and it don't kill everybody. And it does kill people too. Kill a lot of old heads. You know, a lot of people who are getting paid money or getting their money so through Social Security and other means that they've been owed through the government. So, you know, they're expendable. You know, they die, you know, they can't get checks no more. So, you know, 1940s, 50s, and 60s people going to come and tear their ass out. 70s too. You know, friends in the MTA where the Corona is taking their co-workers, multiple of multiple of them. In the NYPD. So people could say it's a flu, all that. That's that's trash. And I'm not gonna get into semantics, you know, where it came from. I don't I think it's I think it was created in a like, you know, engineered, like like as far as like a biological weapon. I think so, because there's nothing I've we've ever seen like this where it doesn't have a pattern. It does what the hell it wants. So, and I don't have to be a scientist to see that. You guys, we can see this with our common sense. You don't have to have 10 years of school to see that because we've experienced it. Once again, that knowledge and experience, you got wisdom now. So, you know, I, you know, I got my mask. You got your mask. We're going to see what up. I'm not scared, but I have my concerns about everyone in general. You know, I have older uh, baby boomer folks. So, let me see what happens though, but, um, this situation, Boris Johnson, yo, that, that, yo, he had that joint, yo, they had him up on that ventilator, yo, but yo, I want to show you guys one more thing, I'm gonna get up out of here, I don't want to make this video too long, and I know a lot of, some people, they listen to this while they're riding or anything, so they don't see the video, they just listen to it, so, you know, they're running around, so they don't see the video, so I'm gonna read out, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a little bit of reading, <laughs> and, uh, we're gonna do this last little article related to the, um, Corona, so let me get my spectacles on. 
my skepticals back on. And we're going to close out this um, Thursday edition of the cut. All right, U.S. records 100,000 cases in the day for the first time. This is, um, I believe this is either last night or this morning. I think this is this morning. No, this is this morning because I, I, I got this this 11 minutes ago. So it's the last hour or so. This is almost 6 in the morning, Eastern time now. European countries impose sweeping year limits as they try to hold the second wave. And with the pandemic looming over the U.S. election, voters who saw the virus as a top issue favored Biden. All right? All right, let's move on. Let's go. Shit is bugged out. I want to show y'all this, man. Yo, listen. I mean, you guys stick around. I appreciate you guys for stick around to the end of the video. Because I, I don't want to use up all the content and then to end of the video and people not seeing it. Because, you know, content is precious over here in this YouTube world. All right, 100 jobs and cases. Here's what you need to know. 100 jobs cases a single day. Italy will lock down six regions and prevent many people from crossing between them. The pandemic was both a top issue and a threat as Americans went to the polls. Voters who saw containing the virus as the most important issue favored Biden. North Dakota candidate who died of COVID last month wins a seat in state legislature. Can you believe that? With the restaurants forced to close early, Italians are crossing the Italian San Marino for dinner. A mutation of virus has prompted Denmark to kill minks of, kill millions of mink of infected mink. This is crazy. This is the one I want to go into. A China, China imposes even more stringent rules on those trying to enter the country. So those are the Corona related stories. You know, we don't talk about it all the time because you don't hear it all the time. Corona, Corona, Corona. But we know you let the information pile up and we're at a crossroad right now. And you know, with the new uh, uh, new administration going to probably be coming in and all the controversy that's going to lead into that, you know, with the old administration, you're going to have to drag them out probably at the White House. So it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be real interesting um, close out to the craziest years of our lives. All right. The mink. All right. Where's the mink story? I didn't put it up there. Oh, okay, I did. This is the crazy part. Mutation virus. Da, da, da. The Danish government will slaughter millions of mink at more than a thousand farms, citing concerns that a mutation of the novel coronavirus has affected them could possibly interfere with the effectiveness of a vaccine. Prime Minister Frederiksen made the announcement at a news conference on Wednesday that there are 15 million or more mink in Denmark which is one of the world's major exporters of mink furs. She said the armed forces would be involved in the culling of the animals. This is crazy. At the news conference corner, Danish news reporters, Kira Malbach, the head of the Danish Serum, warned that some coronavirus mutations could impede the, effic the efficiency of future, future vaccines for humans. Wow. So, so the mink are going to compromise the vaccine. This is nuts, you know. Where are we at? Where are we? Twelve people are known to have virus the mutation. So this thing is mutating through the mink, the animal. Yes, like mink coats. This is a long article. Without published reports on the nature of the mutation or how the virus variant was tested, recent scientists outside Denmark study virus who left someone in the dark. Stanley Perlman, microbiologist at the University of Iowa and a specialist on the Nobel coronavirus, said he could not evaluate the Danish states without more information. The coronavirus mutates slowly but regularly. So that is the relationship it does have with the flu, is the way it moves, it's the seasons it likes to move in, and, and the mutation ability of it. And that's a bad thing, obviously, because the flu changes, you know, you know, it changes and mutates every year, twice a year, um, all year. Boom, study that mutation, label, blah, 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 protein, blah, blah. we don't know what they're talking about, all that poor biology stuff. But you can read it. Denmark has already begun killing all mink at 400 farms that were either infected or close enough to infected farms to concern. The killing of all mink will wipe out the industry here perhaps for years. I know um, Peter's going to love that. Mink are in the weasel family along with ferrets, which are easily infected with the coronavirus. But while ferrets appear to suffer mild symptoms, minks react more like humans. Many conservation scientists have become concerned about the spread of the virus to animal populations like chimpanzees, which are believed to be susceptible, although cases have not been identified yet. The coronavirus, yo. Oh. So. We'll close 
this shit out. All right, boom. Here goes the little um, the reference, the mink reference. This is from Sweden. See, all them big head scientists out there, Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, the Alps, all that shit over there where they ski at. That's where all the big head junior scientists be at. <laughs> For real, though. Iceland, too. The zoonotic origin of the SARS COVID epidemic is still unknown. Animal experience has shown that nine human primates, cats, ferrets, and rabbits, and bats, a lot, a lot, can be infected by it. In addition, it has been detected in field minks and dogs in the field. We are here, uh, here we described in an in depth investigation of outbreaks on 16 mink farms and human living or working on these farms using whole genome sequencing. We, can, we um, conclude that the virus was initially introduced from humans that has evolved most likely reflecting widespread circulation among mink in the beginning of the infection period several weeks prior to detection. So bats in China, minks in Europe. The virus came from two different places. It came from Europe, Italy, that area probably, and then it came from, the, um, from China through the Pacific Ocean, through the West Coast, and it came to New York and the East Coast of the United States through this side. And like I said, man, it just, it, it's, it, it was, it's originally in animals and it's always been in them, but it's been taken out or whatever way, you know, whatever, you, however you want to put it, but it's transferred over to humans and it's been changed, and, you know, because this thing, the way it attaches onto you and the things it could do, it takes people's memories. It can take away your memory. Like your, anyway, man, so. We'll get up out of here, man. We also described the first animal human transmission SARS in mink farms. What? Is on all maybe mink farms in three big genetic clusters with unknown moles of transmission. We also described. I need a pointer. Like the teacher? I need that, right? But anyway, man. Y'all see what time it is, man. We don't go over with that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna go over all that shit. Y'all saw it. You saw the sources. Check it out. Um... Just crazy, right? Um, I mean, here we are. There we go. I'm gonna see you guys on the cup, right? <laughs> the next one. Hey, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here.